Hi there everybody and welcome and welcome to a video that I really have been wanting to do for a long time but I've not had the opportunity because I've had nowhere to put this CNC machine but now I've moved from my modeling shed and I've actually moved into a, a larger modeling room I will admit I'm not organized 100% yet but we're getting there now I can get this machine built and get, get it into the other shed where it's going to go uh, and be used. Now, I know there's going to be a couple of questions you're going to be asking. Why a CNC machine? Why not a laser? Why not a 3D printer? All good questions and the reason I've picked a CNC machine is because a CNC machine will carve. Uh, I want to be carving uh, plaster blanks. Uh, to make up different wall panels, brick designs. So uh, this machine is going to be ideal for the task. And um, besides, a laser don't cut plaster. Simple as that. Now, I picked this up about nine, ten months ago. Quite a long time ago. I picked it up off eBay. It was £150. Now, I've already been looking on back on eBay they're a lot cheaper now they're about a hundred and you can actually get them for about 120 pound I will put a link in the description for this one there's no make on this one it's just a, uh, a Japanese or Chinese made uh, CNC machine there's a lot of parts in here uh, this box contains three layers of all different parts so what we're going to do is we'll have a quick look at all the bits what you get and then I'm going to assemble it and I'm not going to do one of them long boring videos where I sit there for hours doing it we'll just do uh, takes we'll look at the instructions I'll assemble that bit then when I've assembled that bit I'll come back and we'll have a, a quick discussion if there's anything you need to know so with that let's get on so we'll actually get this box open. The one thing I was impressed with really was the packing. Uh, as you can see it's got this thick foam and the first layer is got quite a bit in it so I'll just push that behind the back there out the way. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift that out of the box and we'll have a closer look at all the bits layer by layer. My three layers are out and on the bench and to start off with we have some very nice step motors, uh, they're very heavy, uh, they feel very well made actually, just the whole feel of them, they feel a reasonably good quality. Now you get two of them step motors because uh, the third one's already connected to the cutting head, two of them. Moving on, uh, power supply. Uh, this is hang on uh, 24 volt 5 amp uh, output on this and also there is a round pin uh, plug on this but they do supply you an adapter so if you don't want to be cutting things off uh, and putting plugs on you can use it straight away I'll put that down to one side for a second in this little pouch here we've got uh, they supply you with uh, zip ties. They also supply well a bag of nuts and bolts and a couple of small spanners. I think these are basically for the the cutting head, but we will find that that out a bit later on. And they also give you a set of cutting bits. Now we will have a look at these cutting bits a bit later on because I'm not sure uh, too much about these at the moment. So we'll put them bits back in there. Now, uh, what have we got here? We've actually got the motherboard. This was in bubble wrap, but I did take it out. But this is the small motherboard that go that is the brains of everything. It comes in anti-static bag, which is nice to see. Uh, I can't tell you too much about that, but at least it's in a anti-static bag and at least it was all wrapped up in bubble wrap which is good because 
which is quite an important part. I'll put that to one side. Uh, we've got a small uh, DVD here. Uh, I'm hoping it's going to be a program. We'll put that over there. And then we've got all our connectors and USB cable. So that's all ready. This is the actual cutting head. Well, part of the uh, setup, should I say? Made out of a good tough plastic. The motor motor's already uh, fixed on, so you haven't got no assembly there at all to do, which is good. Let's put that back in there. This is the actual uh, cutter, should I say? It comes with the spleens, so you can uh, fit this straight on and get working I hope and finally we have a very large bag here of there's lots of uh, bolts washers spacers allen keys there's a whole shabam of different bits and pieces in here which I'm not going to go through because uh, we'll see where all these go when we start actually assembling it so I'll put them back. Now what I'm going to do is just move this top one off. Ooh, across to there. The second layer contains your actual cutting platform. This is quite a large uh, cutting area. It's 300 uh, by I think it's 180. Now there is all different sizes and the price varies as well. So they do do smaller ones and they do do bigger ones. But the bigger they are the more they cost. Uh, a good solid piece of aluminium which I like to see quite heavy as well. So that's the cutting platform and the final layer contains as you can see all these small corner brackets uh, for assembly. There's quite a lot of them there. I'm not going to sit there and count them. Uh, the actual metal for the frame of all different sizes as you can see there's quite a lot of uh, metal in there or not metal aluminium should I say uh, two support brackets this is to support the frame you get two of them these are cast in plastic something I might well I'll see see how it goes but uh, I'm, I like metal uh, I like some strength there but uh, that's personal choice. We've also got these, uh, I don't know if you can see in the inside of that, but they're actually lined with bearings to actually make the, the slide a lot smoother and easier, which is very good. Uh, these are cast in plastic as well. We've also got some other brackets, which I'm not quite sure where they go. But we will find out. We've got quite a few packs of them, and more brackets, and more bearings, uh, some chunky steel plates, and by the shape of them, I will say they're to hold the step motors on, which I like to see uh, nice and chunky metal. Finally, we have oh, is heavy that is uh, steel rods. Uh, these are what the table slides up and down on and threaded bar which moves the table using the step motors uh, like I say heavy and chunky that's what, that's what I like and that is really all what we've actually got in this pack now my next step is to get the instructions out and get started and just get this put together so let us get started. Now, first things first, the little instruction booklet they actually give you. Now I've been going through it. It is very basic, very straightforward, but there's sufficient information here to actually build this. Uh, the only one thing I didn't like, there's no part count of your nuts, bolts, and all the other bits and pieces. And there was a few little packets I saw which I couldn't make out where I'm actually going to use them. So hopefully 
what they do is actually do a kit and it covers probably three or four machines so I don't really know if I've got enough nuts and bolts and washers and other bits and pieces to do the job hopefully we have and hopefully there might even be a few left over if not I have actually got some some bolts and bits and pieces that I can actually use but putting that aside the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to assemble the actual bottom now they do actually give you uh, bits that you actually need at the top uh, corner pieces uh, M5 uh, bolts uh, 12 or 10 of 10 times 12 and spacers times 12 the spacers are the uh, washers uh, nuts well they're the bolts and also these are like nuts with like little wings on and these are very easy to use they actually if I bring a bit of the channel in they actually go into the channel I've got one on a, a nut there uh, they sit on the end of the the bolt and they sit into the channel and then they twist and grab and then you bolt them up nice and tight so very clever little idea I like that so what do we need for the base well we need two pieces at 330 luckily there's only two pieces at 330 so that was a very easy one then we need three pieces at 360 there's five of them in the kit so I've got three of them we need six corners uh, corner brackets which I have there and then we need our nuts bolts and washers and it's just a simple job now of actually bolting them together they did also include a good selection of allen keys to fit all the bits and pieces here so what I'm going to do I'm going to go off now I'm going to assemble this bottom piece and then I'll come back and just I don't think there's going to be any problems but I will come back and let you have a little look and then we'll move on uh, to the next section so bottom frame has been done very uneventful went together reasonably easy it was just fiddly getting the bolts getting them tightened tightened up and getting everything nice and flat and level but it went together with really no problems at all so that's me base done so we're going to take that off and move that to one side just for a moment and we're going to move on now to this is the actual upright bit that stands at the back that takes our cutting head and this consists of two pieces of the 360 and these two short bits are 220 now I'm going to assemble them all together and when I've done that I'll come back to you now that bit has been completed it was very easy very straightforward no problems at all now if we bring the other piece back in like so now this bit is actually going to be fixed on the back like so I know you're a bit of a, a weird angle but I have got the camera right on the end of my nose now there's going to be two brackets uh, one there and one on the other on the other side and four of these corner brackets so I'm going to get them fitted on and then I'll come back to you because we're going to start fitting on the actual uh, clamps that hold the actual bars so I'll get this bit sorted out put the four brackets on at the base and the two support brackets and that has made it really nice and sturdy now moving on we've got these like rail brackets they are and there's quite a lot of them to put on there's actually what two four there's eight of them to go on so we've got two at the back we're going to have uh, two of them at the front 
and we're going to have four another four at the top here two this size at the top like so now these are for then steel uh, rails to run through that the actual uh, table and the cutting head actually slide along and keep it in a uh, in a rigid position so what I'm going to do now I'm going to get them clamped on but I'm not going to fix them down too tight but the simple reason is they're supposed to be set at a set distance and I don't know if we can see that but we probably can't but they're supposed to be set at 90, uh, 90 millimeters from either end but I'm what I'm going to do is because we've got to assemble the table next I'm going to set everything on the bottom of the table and then adjust these accordingly so I can actually put my rods through but we will work through that in a very few seconds now I fitted the brackets for the rails two at the front two at the back and also uh, two at the top either side now I'm going to have to do a little bit of back pedaling now because I did say that I was going to leave them loose but when I started to look a little bit further forward to the actual table on the table they show you where the sliders go and they give you a distance uh, between the sliders but they don't actually give you no distance to actually set these up so what I've done and this is the way I'm going to approach it anyway is I've set these at 90 millimeters and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring my table in I'm just going to place my table roughly in the center and then what I'm going to do is because we've got to put these brackets these sliders in these positions and this is what I'm thinking is if we slide the bar through slide it through one of them sliders into the back and put that in position and now I'm just going to measure that distance which is 35 millimeters so what I'm actually going to do now is take that out I'm going to set these up at 35 millimeters from the edge now I'm going to be as precise as I can on these for the simple reason is it's going to be easier to do any adjustment here than it is under there so I'm going to use me square set it up at 35 mil on both sides I'm going to make sure they are square and they're clamped down nice and tight I want that to be really precise and like I say is so we can do any adjustment on there we also have at the uh, piece that goes in the middle this is for the threaded bar that goes through to actually bring the table forwards and backwards I should put that in square and I will put that precisely in the middle of the table so when we've got it up the other way we don't have to go back underneath it at all so I'm going to get them all bolted down and I'll be back with you in a minute so all my sliders have been fitted to the bottom of the table uh, the actual uh, bit for the threaded bar that's been fitted as well central everything is in line and everything works correctly it will it does now because when I put these bars in just to check uh, there was a lot of grating you can hear the bearings moving now but there was a lot of grating and it took me uh, a few minutes to figure out what was going on what uh, is happening is that this part here is slightly lower than the back part and they're not quite just a fraction out and they're not lining up uh, level wise I remedied it by just using some washers these are very thin little washers and I inserted one underneath each of the bolts either side which just raised it up that tiny bit and now they run nice and free so it was a, a good resolve to the that little problem and I'm a lot happier now because they don't grate 
it sounded like the bearings were square I'm happy enough now with this bit now I'm going to get the table up and we're going to get that fitted into the table. Now the table has been put on, very simple job, we just slid the bars through, slid it all the way through to the back and we just clamped it up. Uh, I did loosen these just so I had a little bit of play to actually get them up but it's all gone on nice and smoothly. Now moving from the table we're going to move to this uh, the back bit here where the actual cutting head is going to sit. Uh, the cutting head as you can see has got already got the uh, sliders through it so all we need to do is slide one of the bars through through the cutting head right the way through clamp it up then we, we're going to adjust these brackets here uh, down a little bit to match up and do exactly the same and then we're just going to slide the whole cutting head to one side and then tighten that side up, slide it back over, so and tighten it up, tighten this side up, and that then should run freely between the the two points. So I should crack on with that, and uh, I will be back with you shortly. Now I've put the two rails on the back, uh, and as you can see, that slides along really nicely. Now moving on, we've got to start putting a step motor on this end and we've got to put the threaded bar through now the threaded bar you've got this uh, a bit like a another nut but it slots inside and a spring has to go on to that and I'm going to push it that way and it's a matter of just inserting that in Ooh. and then to start to screw it in there is already a, another nut this side but I think the spring is just to give it a little bit of cushioning as it goes along and it's as simple as that. It's tight on the fingers. Now it's got a support bracket uh, for this end which that just sits in and gets clamped on. We clamp the motor this end and we've got a joiner to connect these two parts up. So I'm going to get on with that and get that finished and uh, I'll be back when it's done. So I've got the threaded bar through, I've got the step motor on, it's been connected up and I have moved it right the way across to this side and made sure that this the motor is in position and I've done exactly the same way onto this bracket. So it runs along there nice and freely. I've also, no, I did kid, I could really, I couldn't wait. I put the cutting head in as well. Uh, the motor, it was just a matter of dropping it in and bolting it up. So this top, top half is all done. Now I'm gonna move down and put the threaded bar into the actual table. Oh, there we go. Now, it's exactly the same we've got this uh, nut with a spring and we just literally screw that through right through to the other side and there's a support bracket to go on this end and the step motor goes on the back end now I'm gonna get on and get that done and uh, I'll see you right we've got the uh, bottom threaded bar put in that's all working nice and freely uh, virtually that is it complete but we're going to turn it round and we're going to put the circuit board on and we're going to connect the wires up and I'm going to try and get it connected up to the computer and see if we can't get some movement out of it so first things first I'll turn it round and we'll get this circuit so board we're all on. ready to put the circuit board on now the circuit board comes and it comes with spacers and some smaller uh, fittings and I've been looking at it and I don't think it really matters whereabouts you sort of put it because uh, me personally this isn't going to stop here very long uh, I'm, I'm going to put this into just tighten that up 
I'm going to put this into a project box because I did notice that there is a 12 volt fan connector so I don't like circuit boards being just left in the open so I think I should probably put this into a project box use the 12 volt uh, fan connector put a small fan this side and a filter that side and draw air through to keep everything nice and cool because all circuit boards need to be kept cool and there's no different to this one so all I'm going to do now is we'll get this just tightened up there just nip it up now circuit boards on all I've got to do now is connect all these connectors up it's all marked out uh, to which one it goes to so I'm going to get on with that and get the power supply done get cleared up and tidied round and then I'm going to try and uh, connect it up to the computer and, and see if I can just get it to move if nothing else now I've finished all the wiring I've plugged it into the mains I've plugged it into my computer I used the disk that they supplied uh, a very very basic program came up I didn't go well I didn't go too far into it for the simple reason is I don't want that particular program on this computer I just use the manual uh, keys to move X Y and Z they all move I was happy unplugged it and I've deleted that program from this computer because this is having its own computer all to itself uh, and that's going to be installed in the shed with this so I've achieved what I've uh, set out to do at the beginning of this video is to actually get the machine built and running now to be honest with you it was a real easy build it took me a whole day uh, to do it but there again if you buy them assembled they're a lot more expensive uh, build wise I was quite happy with the quality of it it was uh, nice and sturdy everything is uh, nice and firm I was having when I first brought it I was having my doubts about these plastic supports but it's a good rigid excuse me a good rigid unit uh, like I said I'll put a link in the description box if uh, you're looking for one uh, and then you can go from there and that's it that's it uh, all I can say now step two is going to be uh, running through uh, making a dust box to actually put this in I've got a, a, a cyclone they call them uh, to draw the dust and muck out of the actual box because carving plaster is going to be quite dusty uh, so the next video will be building that in getting this installed getting the computer in and getting everything sorted ready for the bit I'm not looking forward to and that's uh, sorting the program out finding a program that's going to be a reasonable ease to use because I don't like things too too technical uh, and that's all to come that's all to come so that's it all I can do now is say thank you very much for joining me hopefully we will see you on the next video until then